This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. It's a great app I've been using to manage my money and track my expenses. To get started for free, simply go to rocketmoney.com slash company man or click the link that is in the description. Wish is an internet retailer known for selling ridiculously cheap merchandise, primarily to lower income consumers in more than 60 countries around the world. Now, most of these items are not name brand or incredibly well made to say the least, but the prices are practically unbeatable and there is clearly a large market for that. There was a time just a few years ago when Wish was one of the fastest growing, most promising companies out there. Articles were being published saying that it could be the next Walmart or the next Amazon. In 2015, their CEO CEO said that he believed Wish would eventually become the second or third trillion dollar marketplace. Which I would say was a bold statement considering they only had around 150 million dollars in annual sales at that time. But just like he promised, he was aggressive in trying to make that happen. Over the next few years, Wish became one of the most downloaded apps in the world, growing their customer base to over 100 million monthly active users by 2020 and generating more than 2.5 billion dollars in revenue. In December of that year, they raised over $1 billion with an initial public stock offering that valued the company at $14 billion. A month later, their valuation peaked at around $18 billion, and from there, everything has drastically gone downhill. Wish has easily experienced one of the most dramatic declines of any company over the past few years, evidenced by almost any key figure that I can find. Their revenue has fallen from $2.5 billion down to $287 million. Their monthly active users has fallen from over 100 million down to 11 million. And almost all of Wish's value on the stock market has disappeared. In early 2021, it would have cost over $900 to buy a single share of stock. Today, the price is in single digits. Meaning anyone who invested at the worst possible time back then has lost over 99% of their money. In February of 2024, it was sold to a company in Singapore for $173 million. And again, I have to point out, less than 1% of their peak valuation a little more than three years earlier. It is such a wild company, so in this video, I want to look at the rise and fall of Wish by explaining why they were able to grow so large and why everything has taken such a negative turn. Maybe the biggest single reason behind their initial rise would be technology, and for that, we have to look at their co-founder and initial CEO, Peter Solcheski. He is probably one of the most confident business leaders that I have covered on this channel. For college, he attended the University of Waterloo in his hometown of Waterloo, Canada. His family had immigrated there from Poland when he was 11 years old. After graduating in 2004, he started working at Google, where he wrote code for algorithms. After five years, he quit his job at Google and started working full-time to write his own code. I apologize because I could not tell you the complexities of it, but he basically developed a system that was effective in using someone's browsing habits to predict the kind of stuff that they might want to buy. Something like that can be very valuable. He called it context logic and it would go on to be the foundation that was used to build Wish. He actually used context logic as the official name of the company when he founded it in 2010 alongside former college classmate Danny Zhang. Their first employees were from the math department of that college and the whole company was very much focused on technology. Initially, they used that algorithm to build an app that essentially functioned as a wish list. That's where the name comes from. It would show users a bunch of items from various other websites sites that they would likely be interested in buying. It was one of those things where the more they used it, the more accurate the recommendations became, and that is one of the main features that made Wish so popular. In 2013, online merchants started selling their products directly on the Wish app, and those items would typically sell fast because Wish was displaying them to the people that were most likely to buy them, so that helped attract more merchants to it. Do you see how that system developed and how the technology was the driving force behind it? Another reason behind their success and these are going to start moving much faster, it was the fact that Wish was specifically developed for mobile devices. They say that over 90% of user activity and purchases happen on the mobile app that functions a bit like social media. It has that addictive nature where you go and scroll through all these personalized recommendations, discovering new stuff that is keeping your mind constantly stimulated. More than 70% of their sales do not involve a search of any kind. They come from people discovering things that have been recommended to them. Next up, on 
the list would be probably the most obvious one, low prices. Wish is practically built for people that are looking for extreme deals that aren't all that concerned with the quality of what they're buying. They have been referred to as the dollar store of the internet. The prices are so low because items are shipped directly from third-party merchants, most of which are in China. It was estimated that 94% of their sellers are from that country, so even though the company itself is from San Francisco, most of the stuff you buy is coming from lower quality Chinese manufacturers. Finally, a big portion of their success can be attributed to aggressive marketing. For a while there, they were one of the biggest advertisers on Google and the biggest advertiser on Facebook and Instagram. In 2017, they made a three-year, $30 million sponsorship deal with the NBA team, the Los Angeles Lakers. And coincidentally, in 2020, Wish's peak year, LeBron James and the rest of the team won the NBA championship while they had a Wish logo prominently featured on their jerseys. In fact, sales and marketing has by far been their biggest expense. In 2020, they spent $1.7 billion on it, 96% of which was focused on acquiring new users. I want to point out that these numbers are potentially concerning because they have prevented the company from turning a profit. Despite being so ubiquitous and promising during that year, the company ended up losing $745 million. The plan there, much like many other companies, was to spend everything they could on attracting a user base, building up the business, and switching gears into profit mode later on, when everything was well established, but things have not gone according to that plan. Moving on to the decline of Wish, and I would say that this has been one of the more embarrassing declines. Starting off, I feel like I have to mention the pandemic. Everyone was stuck inside, so more people were shopping online at places like Wish, so the numbers match up nicely with 2020 being their biggest year and then starting to fall in 2021 after the restrictions were lifted and all of that. Most definitely part of the story here, but I don't think it is as big of a factor as it might seem. Wish was steadily growing before the pandemic and fell to levels much lower than those previous levels, so the numbers don't match up perfectly, and there's clearly more to the story. Another reason behind the decline of Wish is a cutback in their marketing expenses. In 2021, the cost of digital advertising went way up for everybody, and Wish's response was to reduce the amount of money that they were spending on it. But remember, all of that money that they were pouring into those Instagram and Facebook ads was how they were remaining relevant and attracting so many new customers. So a lower commitment to advertising led to lower sales and ultimately a scaled back operation. By 2022, their logo was no longer on those Lakers jerseys. Their ads weren't showing up on people's social media feeds, nearly as often anyway, and people started forgetting about Wish. Probably a good thing for many people because I have to ask, how many of the people here have been satisfied with their experiences using Wish.com? Because based on the reviews I have seen and their overall reputation, I don't think they are very well liked. Having an online version of a dollar store is probably a decent idea, but I don't even know if that accurately describes Wish, because to me anyway, their standards have been so much lower than the dollar store. It brings me to my next reason, bad products. Please tell me if you think otherwise, but a lot of the stuff sold on Wish is simply awful. I don't know how else to put it. It's kind of become a thing where people started referring to any cheap imitation of something as a Wish.com version. Like, I don't know, maybe you would call Mountain Lightning a Wish.com version of Mountain Dew. The factories in China making these products have deceived a lot of people into just buying a lot of junk. You might receive a lower grade version of what was advertised, or the wrong color or size, or maybe it doesn't work or falls apart as soon as you get it. It could be an illegal knockoff or feature copyrighted material when it shouldn't. Wish has unfortunately become notorious for that kind of stuff. It has become so bad that even at such a crazy discount, people are shying away from it. Wish has a history of listing dangerous or inappropriate items. The French government even banned them for a little bit because they violated consumer protection laws. I can keep going on about this, but my guess is that many of the people watching this have had a disappointing experience with Wish, either with receiving a bad product or for the next reason on my list, unreliable shipping. Most of the stuff they sell is being shipped all the way from China, so it could take weeks before it arrives, if it ever even gets there at all. People have received empty boxes or never received anything. At the very least, when you buy something, you want to be confident that you will receive it. But the chances of that happening with Wish are not nearly as high as you would hope, and that's embarrassing, right? In Wish's laser focus to become a trillion dollar company, they let a lot of things slip at the customer's expense. To put it simply, they should have been better at monitoring the merchants with stricter rules and more 
more oversight and have more reliable customer service. It is like they made everyone want these attractive looking products, but then failed to deliver them properly. The final reason on my list is competition. There have been new companies out there like Shein and Timu that have their differences. I made a video about Shein if you're interested, but they are also selling ultra low priced merchandise that gets shipped over from China. I don't have too many new things to say about them here, but as of right now, they are considerably bigger than Wish. To summarize here, in my own opinion, Wish has been a total disaster. Unless something major happens, their legacy is going to be filled with upset customers, a negative reputation, and billions of dollars lost. In total, Wish has lost more than $3 billion over the past decade. It's unclear if they ever had a viable business model, and at this point, especially due to their shrinking scale, it is looking unlikely that they will ever make up those losses. Now, they have made attempts to recover their situation, but it all just feels so hopeless. In 2021, they started a standards program to improve product quality. The following year, they completely changed their branding for the first time with a new logo and new colors. That same year, it was big news when Peter Solcheski stepped down from his CEO position, having held it since the beginning, and then only seven months later, his replacement was replaced. So in 2022, Wish technically had three different CEOs, along with other key management changes. There have been new plans and new directions at the company, but none of them too effective. Wish continues to struggle and hasn't shown any real signs of recovery. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Wish? Have you ever ordered something from them? And if you have, what was your experience? Do you see them as a great place to get cheaper, lower quality merchandise, or just a complete waste of time and money? Do you think there's any hope for Wish to revive their business? And what do they need to do to make that happen? I realize I've been pretty harsh on the company here, so let me know if you think I've been too harsh. And any other thoughts you have about Wish, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Rocket Money is today's sponsor, and I keep thinking back to when I canceled my subscription to the Wall Street Journal. They made me do it over the phone. They kept asking me awkward questions about why I was canceling and offering different rates and bundles, and I just wanted out. I'm sure you know these conversations all too well, and that is where Rocket Money can help. It is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. It'll safely and securely identify recurring charges and actually cancel unwanted subscriptions. That is a great feature. I'm embarrassed to admit that I learned about a $20 a month subscription that I didn't even realize I had. I use it to monitor my spending by category, it helps me budget, and overall, I would say it's helped me gain much better control of my finances. To take control of your finances, simply go to rocketmoney.com companyman or click the link that is in the description. Thank you for watching.